Once you do Umrah correctly, your life changes immediately. And bro, I actually mean immediately. You do realize 90% of Muslims, they literally have like 0% idea on why we're doing Umrah. Like, did you ever ask yourself, why do we go around the Kaaba? Like, why do we go around it? And then why do we go around it anti-clockwise? And then why do we shave our hair? And why are we going from like, from mountain to mountain? And like, even men, they're not even allowed to be wearing like underwear, for example. Like, why is it there's like all these things that we have to do just to achieve a state of Umrah? And so what I realized is that like us as Muslims, bro, we've literally been granted such a great gift that not even like the Jews or the Christians or the Hindus, like whoever, not even any of these people, they have this gift that we have. So only you have been, well, if you're a Muslim, but only you have been blessed with such a gift. So by the end of this video, like I'm 100% sure, 100% sure when you watch this, you'll want to go and then do your Umrah. And then trust me, once you finish watching this whole video, you'll realize why that this right here is like a gift and like such a great gift that no one else has been given except you. So look, just recently actually I've been I've been blessed with doing my Umrah for like the second time. I, I literally couldn't help but think I'm like, as, as I'm doing the entire, like just the entire process of Umrah, I'm like, why are we doing what we're doing? Like, why are we going around the Kaaba anti-clockwise and then seven times? And then we're going from like mountain to mountain. And then at the end of it, like we're just shaving our hair and all that stuff. Like, okay, I really, I, I know it's like we're doing that. And then at the end, we're being like reborn, but how does how does all of that work? I'm like, okay, there's definitely some like some deep meanings behind all of that. So I did some research, I did some digging, right? And after going through like so many so many things, I realized no one's really talking about the exact deep meaning behind why we do all of what we're doing. Most of the people they're just saying it's like, well, it's the Sunnah. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do that, and I'm like, oh, that's so beautiful. Like Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do it the same exact way that we're doing it right now. But I'm like, okay, if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was doing it the same way he's doing it. Why is he doing it that way? Like, why are you going from a mountain to mountain? Why are you going anti-clockwise? Why is that? And look, right here, there's an ayah in the Quran that says, are those who know equal to those who do not know in Surah Al-Zumar? Basically, it means that if you knew why you're doing certain things, like the benefit that you get from doing that thing is like, it's literally like, like 1,000 times more once you know why you're doing it. So it's important to know exactly why you're doing certain things that you're doing. Like, I remember I made a video about doing salah. And I was like, this is exactly how you're supposed to be doing rukur and then sujood, and then why we do it. And everybody loved it, because it's like, people finally understood. It's like, dang, so this is the exact reason why I'm doing this. And so when you go and then you do it, you get so much more benefit, because now you're aware of why you're doing it. And here I'm like, what's so sad is literally no one talks about why we do Amrah the way we do. They're just like, oh, bro, it's just the sunnah. That's why. I'm like, okay, bro, like, that's beautiful, but why is it the sunnah? So in this video right here, bro, trust me, I'm going to reveal to you some amazing things that I'm pretty sure you haven't even heard of on any, like, any of the whole internet. And I'm like, don't continue watching this unless you're down to go to another Umrah, <laughs> or even like your first. So don't continue watching this video if you're not down to go do your Umrah. Now look, before we even get into the steps of Umrah, have you ever wondered why it's actually called Umrah? So look, I noticed that Every word in the Quran, and by the way, the word Umrah has been mentioned in the Quran, but every word in the Quran, it's in Arabic, right? Obviously, but words in Arabic, if you just get down to like the root word, you'll notice that you start extracting deep meanings behind that word. So just the word Umrah, for example, like if I go, it comes from the word Umr, first of all. So if I go and ask someone, I'm like, ma huwa Umruk, like what's your age? Umr means age. That's where the word Umrah came from. So the word Umrah, the root word is Umar, like age. So right off the bat, I'm like, hold on a minute. Doing Umrah, it guarantees that your lifespan is going to be increased. So let me show you why. Now, first of all, while I was in Mecca right here, I'm still in Mecca, by the way, but while I'm in Mecca and I'm going to like Masjid Al-Haram and I'm like just seeing the people around me, there is a bunch of people, bro, a bunch of people. But I'm just like seeing the people around me. I'm like, why is it that there's so many old people in Mecca? And then my wife would tell me, she's like, well, there's a lot of old people because old people, they decide to go and do their Umrah like at the end of their life, right? But I'm like, no, like even like the people of Mecca, they're all old. Like you see people sleeping on the streets and they're all old. I'm like, why are they all old? And then I realize I'm like, well, the reason why these people are old is because they're doing their Umrah and Umrah actually increases your lifespan. So you have to understand something, right? So in the Quran, Allah never mentions it's like the age, the ages of prophets. Like do you even know the prophet Musa alayhi salam, like what his age is? Or like Prophet Isa alayhi salam, what his age is. We never know their ages. Because it's not important. But also because like, 
this concept of age is man-made because think about it like let's just say there's someone who's like younger than me but this person has lived a life of so much more stress and anxiety and like worry and just like like struggle right like a lot of struggle that person technically is older than me you'll notice that these people they like sadly they, they die a lot faster than even people like my age like if they i mean i'm not old obviously but like the people who are younger than me if they're living such a life they would die earlier so technically that person was older than me so think of it like if you have two phones right two phones one phone you never use it but another phone you're always using it so you're always having apps open and you're using it and all that stuff so wouldn't this phone have less of a charge than this phone do you know what i'm trying to say so you as a human you have a charge like you actually have like a battery within you you have like a certain battery let's just say this battery is like 60 years old so it means like by the time you're 60 that's when like that's when you die so let's just say you have used up all this battery before 60 that means like you've literally used up all your batteries that means you're gonna die before 60 and what's so beautiful is that you going to do your umrah is like you going to charge this battery so it's like when you go and you put your phone on, on the charger that's literally you going and doing umrah so doing umrah it literally like like it resets it resets your body so even even if you look right here in science this is actually proven so they say the more you use up your telomeres the more you age if you don't know what telomeres are it's basically like these things at the end of the chromosomes and so you'll see even they say chinese people or like asian people their telomeres they don't get used up as much that's why you see like asian people they're always like they, they they're so old but then they still they, they look so young but if you use up the telomeres in your chromosomes then you age faster like your age becomes faster like your lifespan is decreased so what's so crazy is that even the way telomeres are made right like the way they wrap around the chromosomes so if you look at right here these are what telomeres is even this in arabi it's called ta'amir so ta'amir is when you like when you wrap something around something and then like there's a there's a game where you basically like like you wrap a string around it and then you pull the string and then the thing goes and it starts spinning so this wrapping is like it's called ta'amir which is from the word umrah i mean bro like it's so beautiful so you going to do your umrah is like you wrapping this thing back around your life so it's like literally you resetting your whole body and this is the beauty it's like anytime you see a word in arabic by the way i know i haven't even gotten into like the steps of umrah but even when you see a word in arabic if you just take the root word of that word you'll find so many more deep meanings and so much more like benefits that will give you like just appreciation for the word itself now also what's so interesting is that there's an ayah in the quran that says فَمَنْ تَمَتَّعَ بِالْعُمْرَةِ and he uses the word tamatta. now tamatta is like like enjoyment like it's the verb for enjoyment so whoever is like having enjoyment in umrah then it continues but it's so interesting because there's not a single act of worship in the quran that ever had this word being used to it like allah never says like enjoyment of of salah or like enjoyment of like fasting like tamatta. allah would say like enjoyment of like 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 your wealth your children the dunya etc like just enjoyment of the worldly life but never like enjoyment of worship but umrah allah used that word for umrah now it shows that this act of worship is so different bro this act of worship is so different from the rest it has something unique to it like it's almost like it has great benefits that you can use in your life right now i mean think about it what's the greatest the greatest enjoyment that you can have in life like obviously the, there's cars there is wealth there is children there is like your wife and all that stuff but what's the greatest enjoyment your age bro your age because if your age is not there you can't enjoy any of these things and that's why when you do umrah you'll have which is enjoyment according to the quran you'll have more enjoyment with the biggest thing which is your age once again bro like umrah if you do umrah it increases your lifespan and this is this is so proven so think about this right we're gonna get into like the first step of umrah so if we're saying that umrah is here to help you increase your lifespan and like it 100 percent does that so it like it resets your body so do you usually just take your phone and then you just ch like charge it wherever like you take it and then you press a button and it just charges that's not how phones charge right so basically usually you take your phone and you go to like a charger and then you charge it which means if you as a human right now we're trying to charge our bodies that means we have to go somewhere else to charge our body which is why here like step number one in umrah is for you to get your body ready and then go to mecca and bro something so beautiful here i'm like if you had goggles if you wore goggles that allows you to see electromagnetic waves and you wore those goggles and you went to mecca and you saw the kaaba what you would see is that right here 
So this right here is like a Tesla tower. So imagine the Tesla tower. And then in the Tesla tower, you'd see it's like electricity right here. So a Tesla tower, if you just take like a like a light bulb and then you bring it near the Tesla tower, this light bulb would light up, which means there's free energy in this Tesla tower. Now, if you wore these goggles and you looked at Mecca, that's exactly how it would look like. It's it's literally filled with electromagnetic waves, electromagnetic energy. So, bro, it's like the Kaaba itself is literally a charging station. It's so powerful. So just imagine, imagine this tower right here, and then multiply it by a thousand, and then use it on humans instead of devices, and this is what you get. You get this right here, which is the Kaaba. I mean, you can see it's like, it's literally like a like electromagnetic. Here it says bioelectromagnetic, which is something new actually, but it, like it has electricity. And it has magnetism. So this right here is literally how the Kaaba is. It's like a charging station for all humans. And that's why like even planes, planes are not even allowed to go and pass by Mecca. Because the electromagnetic fields are so strong in the Kaaba. Now this is why Allah says right here, Indeed the first house of worship established for mankind was that at Mecca. Blessed and guidance for the world. Now it's so interesting because it doesn't say for Muslims. It says for mankind. So everybody. So if you're, if you're a non-Muslim, like, Kaaba is your place, bro. In an ideal world, I'm like, every single human, in an ideal world, every single human would fight just to go to the Kaaba. The Kaaba is the charging station for all humans. So this is how this is how beneficial it is. So step number one, when you're in the plane heading straight to Mecca, you notice how there's like certain entries that we call Miqat. So if you look right here, there's like a Miqat here, Miqat here, Miqat here. And it's like even in your plane, there's a Miqat. So as soon as you pass the Miqat, you have to immediately go and change your clothes. Or you can change it even beforehand. But it's like, you're supposed to change your clothes from like stuff like this to now wearing the ihram clothes. Which is basically like a toweling that's made from cotton. With no underwear. I remember my mom told me, she was like, you're not supposed to be wearing underwear when you do it. I'm like, but that's so risky. It's like, what if it falls and stuff like that? She's like, no, like you're literally not supposed to wear it. That was before back in like, like I stopped wearing underwear and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm like, why is that? Like, why do you have to do that? And now I realize, I'm like, look, first of all, imagine that as soon as you enter Mecca, you're entering like a like a dome with a very high frequency. So as soon as you enter this dome and you had the intention of doing the Umrah, then you're supposed to be not wearing clothes that have low frequency. Here's what I mean by this. You know that fabrics, the fabrics that you wear, they actually contain certain frequencies. So for example, it's like some fabrics that you wear, they can either harm you or benefit you or just have like a neutral effect on you. So there's this woman right here. Her name is Heidi Yellen. Just go on. Go on Google and just search up Heidi Yellen studies and you'll see like a bunch of studies that this woman has done. And she said that a normal human, they usually have a frequency of 100. And I think she calculated this in hertz because that's what you usually use to calculate frequency. And she was like, a dying human has a frequency of 15. Now in terms of fabric, polyester, it has a frequency of 15. That's why you say, I'm like, bro, don't be wearing, don't be wearing underwear that's made from polyester because you're literally killing your sperms. Like that's why people that wear underwear their testosterone goes lower. And so I'm like, cotton, or she said cotton, has a frequency of 100. Now, linen has a frequency of 5,000. But she says that cotton, it has like a neutral effect on the body. So it doesn't harm and it doesn't benefit, which is beautiful. And it's the same as like a normal a normal human frequency. This is beautiful because it's like, when you are going to the Umrah, you're wearing toweling. You're supposed to be wearing toweling that's made from cotton. And on the inside, you're wearing nothing else. So it's literally like, like you going back to your roots you going back to like like the root frequency and also it's like like men and women they have to change into like different clothes but women can just wear like different abayas and men are supposed to be wearing the towel and this made from cotton because we're going back to neutral but then if you look at like how women when they're wearing their like their ihram clothes they're concealing right but then for men they wear the cotton toweling which is not as concealed so look right here so like the man right here he's not as concealed but the woman she's concealed and i'm like why is that so like in this whole video, I'm going to be talking to you about like, like charges, electromagnetic waves, batteries, magnets. These things are so important because when you look at this in the world, men, they have the positive charge and women, they have the negative charge, which basically means if you're the positive charge, you're the one that gives. And if you're the negative charge, you're the one that receives and absorbs. So that's why even like, like when we're making babies and stuff, the man is the one that gives the woman the sperm and the woman is just like okay sure i'll just take it and she does things with it but it's so powerful like this is how this is how the world is balanced everything is balanced this way there's always a positive and there's always a negative so the man is wearing things that are open because he's the one that gives 
and the woman is concealed because she's the one that absorbs. And so this is so beautiful because it's like men and women are not the same. There's actually an ayah that says that men and women are not the same. I used to look at that ayah and I was like, why does Allah have to mention that men and women are not the same? Like, obviously they're not the same, but going on, like seeing what's going on in this world nowadays, I think it's important to mention that. But look, you, bro, you can't ever say that men and women are the same. If they're the same, then there's no more balance in the world and the world actually falls apart. Like chaos starts happening in the world. Imagine I take two magnets and then I put like the, the southern side and then the southern side and I put them together. They don't go together. They repel. But then if I put like the northern side and the southern side and I put them together, then they stick. When the man and the woman, they're, they're different, right? When they are different, they complete each other. And so this is step number one, which is basically changing all your clothes to now wearing things that are made from cotton for the man. And then as for the woman, you just wear anything that conceals you. Now think about it. It's like when you take your phone to a wireless charger, isn't it usually better to just take off the case from the charger? So that's what we're doing here when we're going to the cab. We're literally taking off the case from the human body and we're wearing things that are like, that you can easily absorb the, the electromagnetic waves of the Kaaba easily. And I'm telling you, bro, we're going to a charging station. We're literally going to a charging station. So you can't be wearing the same stuff. So anyway, so step number two is the Tawaf, which is going around the Kaaba. So this right here is the Tawaf. Now I used to ask myself, I'm like, why do we go around the Kaaba? And then it's like, why are we going anti-clockwise? Like, why can't we go clockwise? Why is it just anti-clockwise? So this right here is for two reasons. So the purpose of the Tawaf is again in the word itself. I'm telling you, just take the words and just like, like find deep, like the, the root word of the, of the word, and then you'll find deep meanings within that word. So look, in the Arabic word, the word tawaf is from the word like tawf or like yatufu, which is to float. And that's right here is the purpose of it. The purpose of tawaf is to literally float. Now, think about it. This right here, right? Think of like a screw or like a, like a nail that I'm trying to screw. So if I do it clockwise, it'll go in, right? But if I do it anti-clockwise, it's going to come out. So this is what we're trying to do. We're literally going anti-clockwise because like we're unscrewing so many things within our body. Like imagine you have, you obviously have a lot of cells in your body and you're just unscrewing, like you're opening up all these cells within your body. So bro, it's like when I was in, when I was doing tawaf, I remember I, like at some point I just went and started doing it just randomly for no reason. Like I'm just doing it for whatever. And you can literally feel like you're floating. Like gravity does not have as much of an effect on you. And it's like walking became so much easier. I asked my wife and I was like, did you feel the same way? And she was like, she was like, she's literally like, yes, like it feels so much easier to just walk when you're going around the Kaaba. And I was looking at forums, right? I'm looking at forums about people and, and their experience in Kaaba. And all of them, bro, all of them, they were like, like when we were doing the Tawaf, it felt so easy. It literally felt like we were just floating as we were doing the Tawaf. So this right here is the whole point of it. It's supposed to start making you feel light. Because what's happening is that it's unscrewing you. And all the sins that you've done in the past, every sin that you've done in the past, do you think they're just gonna you think they're just gonna vanish in the air? They're not just gonna vanish. There's actually a book right here which which says the body keeps the score. So every sin that you do, it gets like, like stored, literally stored in the body. And so when you're doing your tawaf and you're unscrewing everything, that's why you're feeling light. Because everything is just floating. Even you are floating with it. And also, one last note: remember how I said Umrah hopes to increase your lifespan? Well, if you're looking at a clock or time, time moves clockwise, right? But like, if we're going anti-clockwise, we're literally going backwards. We're, go we're going back in time. So even if you have like a, like a tape, back in the day when there was like tapes, if you're like going backwards with the tape, you'd go back in time. So when you're doing tawaf, you're doing anti-clockwise because you're going back in time. And it's, bro, like just, there's so many deep meanings behind why we do certain things that we're doing. And it's so beautiful. And also one last note. So you wonder how, why the men, we reveal our right arm and then we have to like hold it up as soon as we meet the black stone. Because remember, remember what I said? I'm like, there's always a positive and a negative. So even in your body, there's a positive and a negative. So your right arm, this right here is my right arm, by the way. I think the, the screen is flipped. But this right here is the right arm and this arm is positive. This one is negative. So as we're floating around the Kaaba or like doing tawaf, right? And then we're unscrewing our cells. So things are just coming out. Things are just floating in our body. And then we're going and then we meet the black stone. By the way, the black stone, think of it like as soon as you look at it, it has strong electromagnetic waves. So it absorbs a lot of the things. There's even a hadith that says it's like, as soon as the black stone came down, it was white. But from the sins of the people, it absorbed everything. So it became black. So 
as we're doing the tawaf and the things are going out, when we put a right arm, the right arm is like like positive. So it gives. So we're giving the black stone all of our sins. And bro, this is so beautiful because, listen, I've never felt this way anywhere else in my life. When I went to the Kaaba the first time, even the second time, bro, every single every single time, every single time I was doing tawaf, as I'm going and I'm just like doing this, and like I'm saying Allahu Akbar, you feel there's so much energy. There's so much energy that's like within your arm. I'm like, what is this energy? Like as soon as as soon as I started feeling that, I'm like, bro, there's there's something so deep with with this whole with this whole process that no one's no one's talking about this at all. I'm like, bro, like I have to go and find out what this stuff is all about. So as we're literally doing this and we're saying Allah Akbar for men and the women, but for men it's like you're literally like you're you're opening up your right arm. So as we're doing this, we're giving the black stone all of our sins, and that's so beautiful. Like it's literally like a like a cleansing process. And I'm telling you, bro, everything is electromagnetism, man. Like your body is electromagnetic, the earth is electromagnetic, the Kaaba. So this word, this word is so important. So once you understand this stuff, like so much of the world opens up, even about like directions, right? Like north, south, east, and west. I had a whole course in the Discord that talks about the importance of directions. So it's like, if you're literally sitting down and you're facing a certain direction, you'll notice that like if you're working and you're facing a certain direction, the work that you do, is gonna have like so much more, so much more blessings in it, and even if it's like you're sitting in a place and it has windows that are open from a certain direction, that place is gonna have different effects on you than if it had like a different direction that's open in the window. So much so to the point that I revealed the best direction that you can ever face, apart from the qibla, obviously, is southeast, southeast. And in the course, I went over why southeast is like the best direction, but even in the Kaaba, when you look at it, when you look at like the black stone. The black stone is literally put on the southeastern direction of the Kaaba. And I was like, like, what are the chances? What are the chances? Like the Kaaba itself, like just that place, bro, that place, it's filled with everything about electromagnetism. And this is this is this right here is what like Tesla was talking about. How you can literally get like free energy if you understand, if you understand the stuff. And he talks about this is how the the, the sun and the moon, how they're moving. Because in the Quran it says that like the sun and the moon, they're moving around each other. Bro, even if you look at it, just look at it with your eyes and you would see that the sun and the moon, they move around each other. And it's like, how are they moving around each other? And it's because of electromagnetism. And it's like, you ever wonder why the sun comes out from the east and it sets at the west? Like, why didn't it come out from the north and it set at the south? Like, all these things, they're there for a reason. And in the course, I actually went over all of that. And I was like, there is literally a direction that you can sit in and do your work. And you'll notice that every work that you do is going to have so much more blessings in it if you just sit in a certain direction. It's so beautiful, bro. So this right here is the tawaf, which is... Now look, look, look. So here I was like, when you're doing the tawaf and you're unscrewing everything, it's like you're literally preparing yourself for step number three. And you'll see why. Now, as you're releasing everything in your body, like all the cells and atoms in your body, obviously that, that means like things got released, which means that now you have to be installing new things in the body, which is why step number three is the sa'i. It's called sa'i in Arabi. Which is going from mountain Safa to mountain Marwa. Now look, when I first went, it's so funny. I actually wrote everything down here because I'm like, I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss anything to give you in this whole video about Umrah. So I realized two things, right? I'm like, why is Safa big, and then Marwa small? Yeah, I'm like, why is mountain Safa like so big? And then when you look at mountain Marwa, it's like just so small. I'm like, why is that? And then the second thing I noticed is that you know how I, like I care about directions, north, south, east, west, all these things. I noticed that. When I went, bro, just pull out your phone. As soon as you go there, pull out your phone and look at the compass. Just look at the compass. What you'll notice is that Safa and Marwa, they're at the northern and southern direction. So one of them is northern, one of them is southern. I'm like, what are the chances, bro? Like, what are the chances of this being this, like the same exact way? Because if this was east and west, it would have been so different than if this was at north and south. Now look, some of you guys are going to be like, Habibi, why does it matter if it's south or north or east and stuff like that? It does matter. Trust me, it does matter. This is the Kaaba right here, right? And this right here is like Safa and Marwa. One of them is Safa, one of them is Marwa. This 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 drawing is pretty bad, but anyway, look at this. This is Safa and Marwa, and this right here is a magnet. It's a magnet. And if you have a magnet, what does it have? It has a northern direction and a southern direction. I mean, bro, think about it too. It's like north and south is the direction that charges you. The reason why it's important is that north is negative and south is positive. 
east and west there's no there's no charge between positive and negative but north is negative and south is positive so even if you look at like a battery a battery it can't be a battery unless it has a positive side and a negative side so that's exactly what Safa and Marwa is you realize that Safa and Marwa is literally like a like a giant battery that we're just going through doing tawaf over in like inside and this right here is exactly why Safa is big and Marwa is small because Safa is at the southern direction and the southern direction is positive and what did we say we said a man like the masculine trait is positive which means it's supposed to be big and the Marwa is small which is why it's at the northern direction which is negative which means it's supposed to be small because it's feminine and even bro like even even the name the name Safa because in Arabic we have we have like the feminine trait and the masculine trait in terms of the, just the words so Safa is a masculine word and Marwa is a feminine word like bro I'm telling you these things these things are all in the Kaaba as soon as you go there if you know about all these things they're all there all these things are just there and this is why like just try to go just try to go and I'm gonna just experience this stuff right when you're standing a Safa you feel strength you feel like you're brave like you feel like you're standing at like a strong foundation and then when you go to Marwa you feel like you're standing at like something something delicate something that's literally feminine and also like when you're at the Marwa like you you feel at ease but then when you go at Safa you feel like you like you feel like there's supposed to be strength in that in that state so look when you're doing the Sa'i bro like I realize we're literally inside a giant battery I mean just look this is a battery and that's positive and that's negative you could say that this is southern and this is northern this is Safa and this is Marwa it's so crazy bro and also think about it it's like we just went we just came from the Kaaba so we were unscrewing our cells and now we're floating so everything's opened up well if everything is opened up and then we go directly to the Safa and Marwa which is the battery what's happening to us now we're being charged we're literally being charged and also even if you just look at the two names right here right Safa and Marwa so Safa is a word that comes from the like again look at the root words right so it comes from the word like Safu or like Safa which means there's a there's like a whole surah actually which means it's called Surah to Saf which means ranks so in the Quran when this word was used here's like in Allah yuhibbu ladina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi Safan ka'annahum bunyanun marsus which basically means Allah loves those who fight in his cause in solid ranks so imagine it's like there's like a bunch of soldiers and they're just standing in ranks so this is Safa so this name this word it signifies order and strength like things being held together so when you're at Safa when you're at mountain Safa imagine that your cells are just like in chaos right like you're just moving around as soon as you go to Safa your cells they become aligned they literally become aligned like like you know remember imagine soldiers back in the day when they were like sitting at ranks standing at ranks that's what happens to your cells when you're at Safa and then Marwa it comes from the word Tamrir or Murur which is in Arabic it means to pass through to pass through so listen you go to Safa and then your cells they go from chaos and now they're they're at order so they're ranked they're in order and this is happening to your cells because now you're going to Marwa so as soon as you go to Marwa this electricity this energy this light is able to flow through these cells so much more easier float or like pass through the cells so much more easier so bro I'm telling you it's literally like a, like a process of just being charged you go from one place your cells become aligned so that when you go to the other place this light starts flowing passing through your cells easier marwa like murur and bro like like do you realize how this this whole procedure is so powerful like imagine you sinned your whole life right you sinned your whole life and i told you like the body keeps the body keeps the score so the body is not just like you're not just going to go and sin and then these sins are not going to be stuck in your body i mean you look at someone right you look at someone who sinned their whole life like their whole life they're just doing things that are bad you would see it from their face now when you go to umrah and then you get into a state of ihram and then you 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 remove your clothes you put clothes that are going to be able like to allow you to just like like be charged up so much more easier which is like the ihram state and then you go into the the, the tawaf the kaaba going around the kaaba and then you, you're unscrewing everything you're you're literally floating your cells are opening up and then you go and you do safa and marwa like the sa'i and then it's just like you're being charged all these things all, all these sins that are in your body they're just like they, they go like from here all the way up to here so they go into your head and then they go into your hair they literally go into your hair like imagine if someone have you ever seen the, a video of like these people who like they were on the Grand Canyon 
and you can see it's like their hair is just like it's it's like high like it's opening up it's like why is it why is it high like why is it standing why is their hair standing it's because they say it's like you're about to like get hit <laughs> by like by lightning because electricity is, is flowing through you so you're about to get hit by lightning so you have to be careful when that happens to you but that's what happens when electricity is in your body when this energy is in your body it's going to go all the way up to your hair so that's why when like for men as soon as you finish this whole procedure you're supposed to go and shave all your hair so all these sins that you just accumulated through all these years in your life and then you go through this whole process of umrah and then you go through the last step which is like shaving your hair it cleans you so much it's an entire process of just cleansing your whole body and that's why that's why you feel like you become reborn bro like i finished i finished umrah right and i was just sitting on the bed i was just sitting on the bed and i'm like why do i feel this this beautiful energy flowing through my body it felt like every single cell in my body was blessed it's a feeling that like i never i've never gotten in my life before only when i do umrah it's such a beautiful feeling it just literally feels like like it feels like someone just came like light came and it kissed every single cell in your body and that's what umrah does to you so this right here is what umrah is man like umrah is such a beautiful thing and i told you it's like do you see why or do you see how just doing umrah is going to increase your lifespan it's like it's like literally you pressing the reset button on your body and bro like like isn't this such a great gift just going through this procedure such a great gift like if you were living a life of just stress and worry and struggle and all that stuff once you go and you do amra it's like you reset everything so it's like you're like a like a newborn baby this is how because i used to, i used to hear that all the time it's like how is it that when you go and do amra you feel like a newborn baby and this is exactly how this is exactly how like we're here in kaaba right now and then we're we're going we're doing tawaf and everything is just going up right like we're floating and then as soon as we finish that here we're unscrewing everything and as soon as we finish that we go right here and we go through the, the tawaf so everything now is just being charged this right here is such a beautiful battery everything is just being charged and then as soon as everything is being charged we just go and we cut our hair so it's like such a beautiful experience bro and also also keep this in mind they say the macrocosm reflects the microcosm which basically means it's like the big things they always reflect the small things even when you look at the earth and like the electromagnetic field of the earth when you look at your body and the heart it has the same exact thing when you look at an apple it has the same exact thing so the smallest things they reflect the big things so what i'm saying it's like this right here is like a battery that we're going through like the safa and marwa like it's the same exact thing as a battery like an actual battery the same exact thing everything everything is all connected everything is the same and that's the beauty of it man so once again i told you is is the one that knows equal to the one that does not know they're not equal bro the one that knows is so much better than the one that that does not know so right now if you go and you do your umrah and then you know exactly why you're doing it you know exactly why you're doing it anti-clockwise and exactly why you're going from safa to marwa and exactly why you're cutting your hair and why you're wearing cotton toweling once you go and you, once you go and you do it it'll feel so much more beautiful and it'll just make you feel like it's like dang bro like i'm so grateful now just now like the fact that i have this knowledge it'll make you so much more grateful and it'll make the umrah experience so much more powerful for you so i hope this whole video was helpful um if it was man <laughs> just let me know <laughs>